Hi, my name's Dan, and in this video, we're going to be playing with webhooks within Bookstack. So webhooks are one of the newest features within Bookstack at the time of recording in December 2021. And they basically allow outbound web requests when something occurs within Bookstack. So anything that's within the audit log or anything that's within any of the activity views, things like uh, page updates, page deletions, logins, setting changes, Anything like that, we can trigger off these webhooks, which will then perform web requests to better integrate Bookstack with other services where required. So I'm going to quickly show a couple of examples of how to use this system. Webhooks can be accessed through the settings menu by anyone that has permission, anyone that's at an admin level, really. We can get to them through there. And it's here where we can create a new webhook. So first off, we're just going to create a simple one to integrate with Discord, our chat system. Let's create a new webhook. So webhook name, Discord, page changes, that'll do. And then we need a endpoint where we're going to send this event to. Uh, so this will be somewhere typically on that other system, in this case, Discord. So let's go set that up. I think I might already have one pre-configured. So I've got this testing channel within a Discord server integrations webhooks and I'll create a new one for this example book stack webhook updates and let's give that an image we'll save that and then we can get that URL and we'll put that on there so webhooks there's no global standard to webhooks but within Bookstack, I've built the webhooks to be Slack compatible, the Slack Messenger app. And Discord also supports these Slack format webhooks, as long as you add slash Slack on the end. So that's what I'm going to do here. So keep that in mind about compatibility, and we'll touch on that in a minute after we just check this works. So we do slash Slack. And then webhook active, we want to leave that active because we want to test it out. But you can create a webhook, then deactivate it whenever you need without having to delete it, which can be quite handy when debugging things. And then we choose the events that we want to trigger this webhook upon. So you can choose all system events, so trigger on anything and send that across. Otherwise, you can be specific in exactly what you want to trigger on. So we're going to do page events. Anything to do with pages or five of these events. And then keep this orange message into account when you're creating a webhook. Just mentioning that for these events, you might be sharing data that's not necessarily visible within Bookstack by default. So if you have restricted content within Bookstack that uh, has custom permissions set up on it, then you're posting this into a publicly available messenger app then obviously you're gonna be sharing the information that was previously hidden. So keep those kind of uh, scenarios into account to make sure your content is secure as you think it is. Uh, yeah, we'll select our page events and let's save this webhook. There we go. Where are we on the Discord side? Let's exit out the settings. So there's nothing in here at the moment. Let's give this a try by creating a new page. So in my fancy new book, I'll create a page. Fancy new page. Hello. We'll save that. Check our Discord. And there we go. We've got our bot that's uh, posted via that webhook and has put the message Dan created page, my fancy new page. Let's just quickly try another action. Let's update this page. All right, now. I and Brown has updated page, my fancy new page. So where does this message actually come from? So this message, if we go back to our webhook and then we scroll right to the bottom, you see this webhook format example. And this is shown whenever you're creating or editing a webhook. And this is, again, shows an example of uh, what data is sent to that external service, in this case, Discord when the any of those events occur. So the text that Discord was using was this text property. 
And that's what's on the webhook to make it Slack compatible, as I mentioned earlier. So Discord is then seeing this properties here. It's taking that text and then using that directly as the message to post into that chat channel. But of course, there's way more detail on here um, that you could use to customize that, including the, the link of the page that I updated and the full details, what book it's in, um, if it's a draft or not, if it's a template. So you could get more complex, but you're going to have to do that outside Discord, which you can do via various different applications that are out there. So Zapier is quite a common one where you could receive this webhook on Zapier, alter using some of these properties, and then create a new message that you then post into Discord. So Zapier acts as a bit of a, a middle, middleware solution. As an alternative open source offering, I've recently played with N8N. It's on N8N.io. And this seems quite a similar, actually it would seem to work better than Zapier in my testing. Um, but yeah, great alternative if you want something that's self-hosting uh, that you're not going to have to pay for at least quite a lot in the long run. Although they do um, they do have a cloud offering as well. But yeah, that seems like a really good alternative that might be worth exploring. So that's an example of a quite a simple integration. Um, let's go for, for a slightly different example. So I'm going to create a new webhook that alerts me whenever there's been a change to the settings within Bookstack. So, um, settings change webhook. And it's going to alert me via the smart home items that I have within, within my flat. So I've recently been playing with Home Assistant which is an application to manage all your, your smart home things, such as my, my smart lights and my Google Homes and other bits and bobs. I found it really great product, actually. It's an it's a open source system, and it means that I can manage this from within my home without having to rely on uh, third-party cloud giants like Google or Amazon. Yeah, and it's been really good. And you can do some automations through this. Um, including webhooks based. So I've created a webhook already, which I'll add into my webhook endpoint. It just points to my local Home Assistant instance. And then within this, I'm going to select settings update event. All right, that's my webhook created. Let's give this a test. Let's, let's allow public access and see what happens. Book stack settings have been changed by Dan Brown. That's going to flash for quite a while, actually. Um, so yeah, it flashes my lights. It announces on my uh, Google Home speaker that I've got that someone's updated. And it said my name as well, um, taken from my username. If I go to my, uh, into my automation with the Home Assistant to show you what this looks like, Then it was triggering on a webhook, which is what I'm calling out to within Bookstack. And then it's flashing my office ceiling light. And then it's uh, going up to, it's doing a text to speech service to then play on my office speaker uh, with the message Bookstack settings have been changed by. And then using that data that Bookstack's passed, I'm bringing that in. This has taken the triggered by name, which matches up with, sorry, if we just go to that webhook information again which matches up with triggered by dot name so it's taking this bit of data who's triggered this webhook and it's adding that to the message which is then read out on my speaker so just a slightly more complex example of using some of these details in a in a more customized way but really you can do so many things with this system especially using something like Zapier N8N like I said earlier because uh, you could Take a take an event and maybe send an email, post notifications, go to Slack, Teams, any of the messaging apps. Um, you can anything that you need to do event based, and now 
provides you a way to be able to achieve that within Bookstack without having to do something more complex like pulling the um, Bookstack API or scanning the database every so often. So yeah, should allow some really cool new integration abilities. Now there's a couple of things to consider uh, when using the system in regards to performance, especially. So these webhooks, they are calling out web requests when you're doing these actions within Bookstack, which can slow the system down. So when you update a page, it's got to then make this request, call that external web URL, then wait for a response, at least for a certain amount of time. Um, and all this can delay the, the user experience, can delay the the user saving that page from getting a response from Bookstack and continuing on with what they want to do. So to get around this, uh, we do have a uh, asynchronous uh, job system within Bookstack, which can be found in our documentation within our documentation, an email and webhooks page. And then it's towards the bottom of here, async action handling. And this guides you on to how to set up kind of this background worker to deal with all these jobs, such as um, sending off webhook events. And also it does uh, emails within the systems. So they don't take a while to, to run when you're, um, when you're doing anything that emits an email within Bookstack. So it is a bit of, it takes a little bit of setup and you don't need to do it to you start using webhooks, but just maybe once you've got a lot of webhooks and you're feeling them slow down the system, you can look to use this uh, as a way to speed things up again. So when you're setting up webhooks, just a, a useful tip is if you want to see the exact data emitted by webhooks or make sure they're, make sure they're working, then it can be quite useful um, for debugging to have a, a way to see what books that's sending out. So you can do that via requestbin.com. So you can come here and you can create a public bin and it gives you an endpoint that you can then copy into your Bookstack instance. So if we create a new webhook, we'll just go all system events, put a debug webhook. Then we'll save that. And then we can see within here because there's uh, events that occur for saving a webhook, we should now have an event in here. Yeah, a webhook create event. So in here we can see all of our data that books like sent for that webhook creation event. Um, and yeah, again, this provides a nice easy way to, to be able to diagnose or debug the details. You can see exactly what was in that request um, that books like sent in your instance. So yeah. That is webhooks. Hopefully this video is helpful to show you what can be done, but, but the, the possibilities really are endless into this system. And it, especially, as I said, once you get something in the middle there to connect all the systems together, um, things can get really, really powerful. Yeah, hopefully this video was helpful. Let me know if there's any further information you'd like on this. Otherwise, I'll put any links to any of the things that we've seen in the description below. But uh, other than that, have a great day.